This is Jim Williams with the Hurricane City Tropical Update video for July 5th, 11 a.m. Here's a map from the 1916 hurricane season. And this hurricane developed, uh, started to become a depression on June 29th down here. And then on July 6th, made landfall near Biloxi, Gulfport, Mississippi as a major hurricane with wind gusts up to 125 miles an hour. People were absolutely freaking out when this thing came ashore. They weren't, didn't get much notice on this. And they were jumping in their cars trying to escape and get inland. And the wind was so strong it flipped over the vehicles. There were 10 people killed in their automobiles from winds taking their vehicle and throwing it. So that was a heck of an event ha happening uh, in July. Uh, rather unexpected for the northern Gulf Coast. And then we go forward in time. Here we are in 2005. Uh, a few days from now, we'd have a tropical depression developing in the southeastern Caribbean Sea, which would later become Hurricane Dennis, and it would affect Cuba on the 9th, and then on the 10th and 11th, it would come ashore near the Florida Panhandle as a major hurricane. So that was uh, back in 2005. We were already up to the fourth named storm. This year, we've only had Alex, so we're a little bit behind the 2005 hurricane which season, which ended up with 28 named storms. All right, here is the uh, water vapor loop of the Atlantic Basin. This is the infrared image from uh, LSU. And uh, this, this is a great image because it, it allows you to see the real fine details in the upper levels of the atmosphere. And uh, we have, you know, several systems out here. We have this blob out here northeast of the Antilles that's interacting with a trough of low pressure. We have Invest 96L down here in the Western Caribbean Sea, and we have a tiny Invest 95L south of Louisiana. And if you notice on this image, I'm going to zoom in on the Western Caribbean Sea and the Gulf of Mexico because these are the two areas, that, the areas of Invest that we're concerned about right now. Uh, what we have going on is we have a upper level low in the western Gulf of Mexico. You see it's starting out small, but now it's starting to stretch out, which means it's on the weakening stages. But that's southwesterly wind shear out in front. And we also have increasing northwest wind shear in the eastern Gulf of Mexico. So there's only a small channel of favorable winds, and that's right in between these um, and more than likely, if this upper level low backs off to the south or weakens altogether, the trend would be for this to go more to the northwest and maybe even west-northwest. Uh, most of the models right now are indicating somewhere in here between, uh, let's say, Corpus Christi, Texas, and <clears throat> Morgan City, Louisiana. That's where the model spread is right now. <clears throat> A couple of models take it down into Mexico. We'll have to see about that. But it um, looks like the, the channel is going to be off to the northwest. But it's not real favorable out in front of this system, and, and it remains disorganized. The Hurricane Hunter for today was canceled. So um, we're just going to have to kind of guess where the center of circulation is on this thing. Now here's uh, the map from uh, sailweather.info. And I like to zoom in on ship observations in the areas where I think a developing low pressure center is taking place. Now this is from a ship called the Elvira. This is the position of it at 0600 Z, which is like 2 o'clock in the morning uh, Eastern time. And it reported... Northeasterly winds here of 37 knots down here, um, and it also reported northeast winds of 37 knots a few hours earlier when it was south of Jamaica over here. So I'm not sure what this ship is reading, if the observations are working properly, but we go back in time and look at all the uh, ship ops. They had uh, 37 knots at 6Z, uh, 37 knots about uh, six hours before that when it was south of Jamaica. And even when it was up near uh, 23 and 65, which is uh, north of Puerto Rico, uh, this system was showing, these, this ship was showing winds of 30 to 35 knots out of the northeast. So this could be instrument malfunctions um, more than actual winds down in the Western Caribbean Sea. But I thought that was interesting. But if you look at the observations down in Honduras and Belize, the pressures are just as low down here and the winds are really light and variable maybe out of the west and west southwest so there's some sort of a broad circulation going on here uh, so we'll just, just remain to be seen where the center of circulation is on this all right here are where our two invests are and again you can see them in the uh, western caribbean uh, gulf of mexico and i expect 95l to disappear over the next 24 hours as it moves inland so all focus will be on 96l and again there's the position of it and i Again, I think it's a little bit over here somewhere, maybe back in here where there's a low pressure trying to develop, but the current 
position they have it at the in the Yucatan Channel, so we'll we'll see what happens with that. Uh, here's the early model runs. The BAM model takes it in towards um, uh, Port O'Connor, maybe Texas, uh, somewhere up in this area, Matagorda area. Uh, the LBAR takes it into western Louisiana. The Euro model takes it right near Galveston. It's a very weak system, and uh, so I, I would say somewhere between Port of, uh, uh, Corpus Christi and Morgan City would be the most likely point of landfall right now if, if the system does develop. Here's the uh, uh, ASCAT from this morning. This is an ascending scatterometer uh, fix from a satellite. Uh, again, you can see all of the barbs are basically uh, moving in this direction here. And again, you can't, the, the data is missing over in this area here, so we don't know what's happening over here, but the winds are all out of the south and southeast on the east side of a potential. And then they look like they're bending more out of the east when they get up near the Yucatan Channel. So maybe the, the center is up that way. We'll have to wait and see. Here are the upper level winds from the University of Wisconsin, and you can see that the it's primarily northerly winds around 20 knots, and then they turn off to the northwest here. So this is unfavorable in the eastern Gulf of Mexico right now. And then we have 30 and 40 knots of shroud here because of that upper level low I showed you before. Now we have a little bit of a high pressure ridge that's too far to the west of 96L, and that's probably disrupting it a little bit with northwesterly wind shear, and that's why this is not getting its act together right now. A high pressure has to be directly over the top of a developing system to give it a support, outflow support at all levels of the atmosphere. 96L doesn't have it right now. In fact, that happened with Alex, and finally when it got in the Gulf, Alex had the high pressure directly over the top of it that helped it to strengthen as it approached the Mexican coastline. Now, elsewhere, we have this trough out here, uh, right up in here, and this causes wind shear all through the Atlantic, so we're not expecting anything out in the Atlantic to develop over the next few days, but there's a wave right here that's going to move off to the west and could develop late in the week in the western Caribbean Sea. And again, they're working on the oil spill out there. Uh, again, this is going to disrupt some of the winds and seas out there. We'll keep track of that very closely and have the oil spill cams on the live feed at HurricaneCity.tv. Well, that's it for now. We'll be back with another update tomorrow. Again, the recon was canceled. We'll watch 96L closely and have another update tomorrow. Thank you again for visiting Hurricane City.